And these shoulder pads are literally ice cream containers. <laughs> To say I am excited about this week's Off The Hanger is a little bit of an understatement. This has been a long time coming, but today we are talking to the incredible cat and her fabulous drag king alter ego, Freddie Merkin. Strap in, this is gonna be a very fun episode. So I am beyond excited about today's Off The Hanger. Oh my goodness. So Kath, it is evening for you, morning for me, but you look so fabulous already. This is unbelievable. Thank you so much, Emma. Yes, I've been drinking wine. I hope you haven't because it's what, 9am or something there and it's it is, 7 yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could this... have a wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is 7 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> exactly, <right>? exactly. <laughs> now you have the most incredible wardrobe, I imagine, for yourself as Kath, but also for your alter ego, Freddie Merkin. Correct. Yes, I am a little bit obsessive. And honestly, this little tiny room that I'm in at the moment, which I call my drag room in our house, is literally not big enough. I have a lot of costumes and I'm, yeah, I'm a bit... I'm not very good at getting rid of things in terms of costumes. I like to hoard a little bit. So it's growing and growing, but the room's getting smaller and smaller. So yeah, I, I do have a lot. And do you make them all yourself? Um, no, I don't make them all myself, but I am, I'm trying to make a lot more of my costumes now than I used to, mainly because of cost, to be honest. And, um, and look, also, because I really love it, I'm a very creative person and um, it mainly came about because during COVID, that nasty C word that we all experienced, <laughs> I had so much more time on my hands and my nana was an amazing sewer, as I'm sure a lot of our nanas were, and I inherited all of her sewing gear years and years back when she passed away and I really hadn't given it much thought or much time I, I liked sewing but I hadn't really done much with it and being stuck in lockdown meant that I could actually um, you know practice and do a little bit more sewing and I really started to enjoy it so since all that lockdown business that nasty word that we that we hated um, I've really been trying to make a lot more of my own costumes which saves me money but it also gives me tons of enjoyment which I love. It's such a creative process. I love, I'm not the best at making things, but I do really yeah. enjoy it. Even if they are a little bit botched on the inside, it's yeah. fine. Neither am I. Neither am I. Let's be <laughs> honest. I love a good hot glue gun. Yes. <laughs> I can sew, so, but I'm getting better. And it's something that just takes practice. So the more I do, I feel like I'm refining. And yeah, it's just so satisfying to be able to have a vision in your head of what you want to create as a costume and then have it actually in true life form and be able to wear it out. So that's very fun. And have you always been into fashion? Did you love dressing up as a child? Oh my gosh, yes. And and I was hoping that you would ask me this question. I mean, my earliest memories are literally about dressing up. My mum had the best dressed up box in the whole of our suburb. And all of my friends used to come around and borrow things from our dress up box because mum had all the, you know, the 1960s and 70s little like mini skirts and big shoulder pad crop things and sparkles. And, and my one of my relatives actually gave me a pair or two pairs of her platform shoes, which was size two. So as I think <laughs> about a five or six year old, I used to wear these cork platforms which were horrible fake denim with daisies all over them and red buckles and all sorts of craziness and I loved them so dress ups for me was like the best and you said that you're not good at getting rid of things out of your drag room but what is the oldest thing that you've got oh my gosh well I mean I've only been doing drag as a drag king for around about five and a half years now so the first thing I made, my name Freddie Merkin actually is derived from Freddie Mercury because I love Queen and, and I wear a big hairy moustache. You'll probably see in some of the photos you're going to share. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I have, I have here for you the first Freddie jacket that I made. Now I'm going to show you. It, it's pretty bad, okay, but it's improved. So this was my first jacket that I made for Freddie. And these shoulder pads are literally ice cream containers. <laughs> um, and I just kind of randomly stuck stuff on. And on the back, 
I wrote Freddie because I thought everyone knew who I was. <laughs> so this was the first jacket that I made and I kind of loosely based it off one of Freddie Mercury's jackets that he wore um, for some of his performances. He's sort of his captain jacket. Um, so that was the first one I wore for some of my first performances and I felt so fabulous. But now looking back at it, oh, my goodness, yeah a little but I love yeah. that you still have it I love that you still yeah. have it because it's something that you should never ever get rid of that first piece no. is just That's so right. iconic I think it's incredible to keep so then I improved on it so this was the second version so this was nice. this is a little bit more like Freddie's jacket right mark so, two I'm I like Freddy. it but I actually made these out of can you tell what they are are they shit They're pads like yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Great. I made them. I'm a very big op shopper because I get a lot of like secondhand and up, up, you know, upcycle things. Um, I found these shin pads and I wanted really big shoulder pads. So I sprayed them and stuck them on. I was quite happy with that. They've worked so well. Out yeah. of context, you'd never, ever guess that they were shin pads. They're so fabulous. Well, yeah. It looks great. Don't look too closely. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's the oldest drag thing I've got um, from when I first started. Yeah. Now, this is going to be such a tricky question for you to answer. I think you're really going to struggle with this one. But what's the piece in your wardrobe that gets the most compliments? Easy. That's so easy. It is so easy. Oh my gosh. Okay. It is easy. It is easy. Although I'd love to say I get tons of comments all the time or compliments. But because I do a lot of Freddie Mercury stuff, um, I actually commissioned this piece by a fabulous drag queen that I know, and I'm very lucky here in Australia in Melbourne to have some wonderful drag queen friends, but two in particular that are amazing seamstresses. So um, I commissioned this piece. Now, it's in the background here. Can you see? <sighs> the gold. This oh, my gosh. So this is the Freddie Mercury jacket that my friend Polly Filler, she's a drag queen here in Melbourne, she made this for me. And to go with it, I decided that I would make a very big crown. So this is my <laughs> crown that I wear when I'm dressing up as Freddie Mercury. And I pop this on my head, which is pretty giant. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's very royal, isn't it? You're from England, so. Exactly. It's very regal. You could definitely be part of the family. I could. I could probably turn up to Buckingham Palace and stand there and look quite the part, really. <laughs> you really could. I'm sure they'd let you in and invite you for afternoon tea. It looks fabulous. Yeah, I love the jacket as well with all the buckles on it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really spectacular and it really just pops in the, you know, when I'm on the stage or if I'm doing any song, because everyone loves Queen songs and um, I don't sing, I lip sync. So as a drag performer, no live singing for me. That would be very bad. Um, but when I do Queen songs, you know, everyone sings along and they just love this this outfit, especially with the, the Harlequin jumpsuit underneath as well. It's very iconic, Freddie. It is really iconic. I love that. Now, I imagine it's quite expensive having the pieces commissioned. What's the most expensive piece that you have? Yeah, look, this was a really funny one for me to think about because um, when I'm making my own, I can do them a lot cheaper. Um, and I've spent a little bit on getting a few key pieces made, which I try to wear again and again, obviously. And they're really well made. So I'm really appreciative for that. But actually the most expensive thing that I have in my costumes is what I call my underwear. Right. So I will share some photos of you. I wear um, a bodysuit underneath, which actually looks like I have a hairy chest. Nice. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, have you seen any photos? Have you? I have seen like... the photos. Yeah, on your Instagram, I was like, "That looks what? incredible." I don't actually have a hairy chest, just to put it out. <laughs> it's a bodysuit that I wear, and I'm going to try and show you because it is a full body suit, but it has everything. So, to keep it PC, I'm going to keep it just above the the groin. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Right. All right. So it's going to look kind of weird as I hold it up here. But this is kind of what my suit looks like. Yeah. Yeah? So yeah, I so have got the proper pecs and the abs yeah. and the hair and the belly button yeah. and everything. It's such a yeah. clever piece. 
It's incredible, isn't it? And um, and I found a couple of these and I have worn them ever since and I absolutely love them and I swear by them. They themselves were not that expensive, but I also tried this piece, which is probably my most expensive um, part of my costume and it's called a silicon chest. So if you have a look at this. Oh, amazing. This is like the realest looking chest that I could probably ever have minus hair <laughs> yeah that is incredible that is so realistic yeah and you can imagine once you've got like jackets and maybe a scarf on around here I look like a very muscly man which I'm very <laughs> much not <laughs> but that's probably the most expensive thing that I've bought with my money I actually don't wear the silicon very much because as you can imagine it's like wearing something that is the most non-breathable fabric you could ever wear yeah so. i was gonna say i bet that is extremely hot if you incredible. were here in the uk you might get away with it because you know it's exactly. never that warm I here <laughs> i think it's that you need to do a world tour that's what it is i oh, think there needs amazing, to be a freddie merkin world tour and then you can go to all the various cold places as well and then you can wear the silicon chest <laughs> Exactly. So for summer climate, and especially um, here in Australia in summer, oh, the worst thing I could ever wear. The hairy suit's really good though. Um, so I really love that product. And to tell a little secret while we're on our little chat today, I'm actually in the process of developing my own um, nude illusion suit, like a male nude illusion suit, very much like the one that I wear, because I think that there's a huge opening in the market especially for all the drag kings but also cosplayers and um you know theater productions where they want to have the illusion of a male chest but not actually have any nudity I think it's a really big market that's actually not tapped into so I'm secretly developing one myself at the moment that's incredible and I think <laughs> the best products always come in my opinion from the people who actually wear and use them because totally. you know what you're looking for you know how comfortable it needs to be how it needs to fit how it needs to look and I think yeah. from somebody who doesn't ever wear them or use those products it's so difficult for them to develop them because they don't have that understanding so are you saying that you don't wear like a male nude illusion suit ever Emma or not often <laughs> But, you know, as a stylist, I have regularly had to cover up other people's bits. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they are probably my big investment pieces. But honestly, because it's something that I wear every time I do performance, it's it's totally worth the money. Yeah, your price per wear on that, you're definitely getting your money's worth. Yeah, yeah, totally. And we won't look too closely at it because it's starting to look a little threadbare. <laughs> <laughs> it's had better days. Yeah, What's the exactly. newest piece you've got in your wardrobe? So the newest piece is actually something else. Well, I've made I've made one myself and I also got one commissioned. So my favourite new piece is over here. I'm just going to drag it over a little bit closer for you. So I was very much into, I'm an 80s child. So I grew Me up too. in the 80s. Love the year, you as well, right? But who doesn't yep. love the 80s? I don't care if you grew up in the 80s, you still love the 80s. Yeah. We've got like young people these days saying, oh, that old vintage music, and they all were dancing and loving it. We're like, we grew up with that, right? With the, so, we were here for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I love Footloose. So I had this piece made. <gasps> Look at this. Like a sequin -y tuxedo with frills a velvet cummerbund velvet bow tie with just a little flower on the lapel small but it's small small one, corsage a corsage corsage yeah it's um mm -hmm. it's actually one suit so oh, it's suit. A jump oh that's amazing suit. yeah it's incredible isn't it and um again i was really lucky to have my really good friend passion couture who's another very very well-known drag queen here in Melbourne and an amazing seamstress. She makes a lot of clothing um, for a lot of the drag queens, including some that were on RuPaul's Drag Race. And amazing. she made this. It fits like incredible. Oh. But um, I had the vision for it and I worked with her and said, you know, can you make this for me? And she made it happen. So, yeah. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's the sequins are yeah. beautiful. I'm a, such a magpie. I love anything sparkly, but that colour and that fabric is mm. exceptional. 
It's great, isn't it? And you know what? I think if I get invited to a wedding or any formal occasion, I don't care. I'm wearing this as Kath as well as Freddie. Oh, completely. Is, yeah. That is I a complete, so. yeah. I'd be wearing that too. That's amazing. I definitely want to wear that. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's all stretched. So it's very comfortable. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Now, have you got a most sentimental piece? Are you quite sentimental when it comes to the things in your wardrobe? Yeah, I am. And look, I, I'm probably not so sentimental with each costume that I have, but more like I started to talk about before, I'm sentimental with the process of how I got to be making my costumes or wanting to make more of my costumes. So I have a little part of my Nana's collection here that I wanted to show you. And this is probably the most sentimental thing I own. I just love it and I use it all the time. So it's her little, I don't know if you can see, it's her little oh, yes. leather bound, it says a stitch in time saves nine. And it's like just a little needle you know, like little needle. Oh, it holds um, all the needles. Oh, that's so lovely. What a beautiful thing. It's so cute. And I remember when I was young and, you know, in my Nana's sewing room, you remember things that were in there when you were a child. And I always remember her having that. If she had to fix anything or darn my pop socks or, you know, sew patches on his jumpers, she always had that. So that's really sentimental to me. And I feel like by now me using my creative to make my own things, I feel like that's a bit of my Nana, but she would be so proud of that and she would really love to see me doing all this now. So, yeah, that's sentimental. And do you know where she got it from? Did she have it that from new or did somebody no. give that to her? I mean, I think, oh, the actual, I, I actually don't know where she got that from. I mean, in my grandparents' era, they always mended and darned and sewed their own clothes and knitted their own jumpers. So, I mean, I grew up with my grandparents. My Nana always made clothes for herself. So um, I don't know where a lot of her things came from. She did originally come from England. So perhaps somewhere in England it came from, I'm not sure. It's beautiful yeah. and it's such a lovely piece. It's. Do you have yeah. the show there called Antiques Roadshow? It's a really random reference. Yeah, yeah, I do. So, yeah, if you could take it to Antiques Roadshow and then they could tell you where its origins were. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? I, I actually, there's, you know, there's things that my Nana owned that I wish now that I had more information about. It's not until after they're gone that you kind of wish you'd ask the questions. But ask the questions I guess I and where did it come from? It's such a lovely item. Um, now, is there a piece in your wardrobe you would say most sums you up? Well, it's probably my festival hats. So I made this hat that I'm wearing um, and I've made, oh, goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably, like, I've made lots of these hats to match <laughs> all my different outfits. So I'm actually going to turn this around a little bit for you. You can probably see them sitting up in the oh, back Oh, yeah, you can see them. Yeah, so I have, like, captain's hats and I have, like, one with a bear print on them and I have lots of sparkly cowboy hats. So I think really for me my hats kind of sum me up. I wear them often and I try to make myself elevated and taller by wearing big things on my head, whether it's big wigs or big hats, because honestly – I'm a short little guy amongst a whole lot of big drag queens that are like, yeah. So if I don't have big hats and big shoes, I am lost. <laughs> I love them though. They are such a great statement. Yeah. And I love that you're able to really customize them and make them each yeah. really individual. And I grab all the bits from like, you know, an old pair of shoes I found at the op shop or some old belts or old jewellery and I kind of pull them all apart. So it's a really nice process to make them as well because it's quite meditative in a way when you're sitting there, you know, gluing things on and configuring them, just making them sparkly and fun. I love it. I love them. I love them. Now, you. are you somebody who ever has a wardrobe malfunction or a fashion faux pas? Because these things happen to me all the time. <laughs> and I was listening to some of your other podcasts earlier and I'm, I just really wanted to listen to everyone else's stories. Of, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, but I definitely had the fashion faux pas. The most recent one I had was when I made this outfit over here, this pink one, this pink and yellow. And I based this off... Um, uh, a wrestler, an old wrestler. I think his name's Randy or something. 
And so I find it, I just love it and I'm going to try and copy it. So I put a whole lot of time into trying to make it really the same. And you know what I did? I put the zip in backwards. So, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So when I zip it up, the little toggle is on the inside. So you oh have to come through the inside and up. So let's not tell anyone that. When you see me wearing it, don't even look. But, yeah, that yes. was that was. So I have to kind of like zip it up from the inside, which is a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you only do it once, don't you? You learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. You never fail. You either win or you learn. Exactly. There's, exactly. there's no failure. There's only learning. Exactly. And then, look, the other time I could think of that came to mind was a fashion faux pas. I was wearing a really, really wide pair of bell bottoms. And again, I wear really giant shoes when I um, am performing in drag to make me look lots taller to stand amongst the drag queens. And I don't know how, but as I was walking, my foot got caught inside the bell bottom of the opposite leg and oh. I literally <laughs> fell over and just hit the ground yeah it was crazy oh, no. very embarrassing <laughs> I think we've all toppled at some point I think there's yeah. nobody on earth that's ever yeah uh, not toppled off their shoes if exactly. they haven't then they're not living life properly I don't think <laughs> it's, it's just when it's in a whole room full of people it's not necessarily the best time to do it but anyway we move on Exactly. We move. We just keep going. It's fine. Exactly. Speaking of yeah. shoes, do you have a favorite pair? Wow. Now I'm really excited to show you. I have two pairs for you. This was very hard for me to narrow down anything. The first pair I'm going to show you are completely my favorite shoes, but completely unpractical. And I would love to say I'm going to wear them, but I haven't at this point. And you're going to see why. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. I'm going to grab them. <gasps> oh my word I love those yeah so can you see I wish I had a ruler to show you how tall that is <laughs> crazy. Like, they're amazing aren't they and I literally am so tall when I wear them but if I wear them I'm very fearful for breaking something so yes it's, it's quite yeah. a height to come down from <laughs> oh my god yeah like crazy were you a fan of kiss yes love it yeah yeah yeah. they're perfect but i love yeah. anything kind of star print star print metallics um, anything like that i am there i would put stars on everything if i could you can see yeah. all my stars this one i love stars there's something about it is just very joyful and fun especially when you add some sparkle exactly stars yeah. sparkle yep perfect what are the other pair you said you had two pairs oh. Yeah, so these look really terrible, which is why I thought I need to show you something. <laughs> but again, because I perform amongst a lot of very, very tall, usually men dressed as women, as drag queens, they add heels, they add hair, and I'm really short. So I always need really, really tall shoes. But I've never been a woman um, who has worn high heels, ever. So you can imagine my dilemma when I start doing drag. I need high shoes, but I can't wear heels. So I purchased these, which are my favourite shoes ever. Super comfy. These are my sneakers. Ah, uh, but they're really cool. You see, I do like yeah. a flat form like that. I think they're really cool just to add that height, but then your foot exactly. inside is still super comfortable. And I can get around in these all night, whereas the drag queens are all hobbling by the end because they've been <laughs> they're wearing crying. Them. Their feet are crying by the end of the night. Exactly. And I did <laughs> grow up in the 90s with, um, I think, over in England, buffalo shoes. Buffalo shoes, buffalo trainers, yeah, very Spice Girls. Um, Spice Girls, exactly. My brother bought me back a pair of red, blue and white ones and I loved them. I wore them for everything over here for years. So I'm secretly living like my my fantasy from like 25 years ago. <laughs> absolutely I because i think we all get to this age and we basically just stop giving yeah. a shit what other people think exactly. so then we just go i'm gonna wear whatever the hell i like because i no longer care totally. what you lot think totally and you know what i think there's a really there's a really great amount of joy and liberation in owning what you wear and going you know what if i feel good in this if i look good in it i'm gonna go out and look like this and everyone else will go oh wow she's owning it you know what i mean Completely. Yeah. 
completely that's definitely what you should be doing um now is there a dream fashion item something that you don't have but that is on your wish list yeah well there is because i've always also as part from loving freddie mercury and queen i've also really always been in awe of elvis and elvis's costumes so i've looked up online about ordering elvis costumes with all of the bling like these guys are thousands of dollars the full jumpsuit with all the bling with all the decoration so you know what that would be on my wish list if i had no money object you know no no limitations i would probably order myself a full elvis jumpsuit i think that would be awesome that would be amazing i would yeah. love that that would be such an incredible thing to own yeah. oh my goodness you said you started doing drag about five years ago is that right how did you get into doing drag well as i said emma i always love dressing up so for me um, even before finding drag, I was always the person that if you had a dress up party theme, I would go 100% over the top. And I would, <laughs> I would so work on my costume. Yeah, right? I just loved it. And it was, for me, I think a little bit about transforming into a persona. When you dress up, you can be anyone you want, right? And you can change who you are. You can feel different by what you're wearing. And I think. For me, growing up my whole life, clothing really was a way to feel different about who I was. So you put something different on one day and you feel a certain way and people probably view you that way, you can then change it the next day and wear something completely different, right? So I love that. I love that clothes can really, you know, they can make us feel great. They can make us feel terrible as well. They really can, yeah. 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 So finding the things that make you feel really good. And for me, it's about, um, I guess, stepping away from Kath and going into persona of Freddie, who is fabulous and glittery and sparkly and can wear fabulous clothing and act just a little bit camp and fabulous to just be transformed into a different persona. So, um, yeah, I'd always loved the dressing up, but then I found that there was actually such a thing as a drag king and not just a drag queen. And I saw some drag kings perform and I thought, you know what? I want to do that. I want to give that a crack. So I did. And this is where it's taken me. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. And so how would you, what piece of advice would you give to younger Kath about fashion? <sighs> You know, this is a really tricky one because I think I've always been okay with changing my fashion as to how I feel. And, you know, I kind of, if I was going to give advice to anyone else as a younger self, I'd say, you know what, wear it because you feel good. Don't wear it because you want to conform to someone else. Maybe that's the advice I'd give myself, but I think I kind of did that anyway. And that's what's led me to be all of this. <laughs> But that's brilliant. I love that it's deep rooted yeah. in you, that it's such an yeah. instinctual thing that yeah. you knew who you were and that you knew to wear things that made you feel fabulous. Because I think so many people yeah. do go through life conforming and wearing what they think they should wear rather oh, look, than what they actually want to wear. Wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I conform to a lot of the trends and all of the bad ones. <laughs> but I think that experimenting as you go through from being young through your teens, through your young adult, and, and wearing different clothes and seeing how you feel in those clothes is really important. It's part of your growth to then eventually get to where you are. And I'm turning 50 this year. So, you know, I feel really good about who I am and I feel comfortable with, you know, popping on whatever I feel. It's good. It's great. Continue doing that. Please continue doing that. And please continue posting it on your Instagram because it just brings so much joy and so much sparkle to the world. It is fabulous. That's so kind of you to say. I really appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you for being a guest on Off The Hangar. I think you might possibly have been my favourite. This has been so much fun. I have loved every minute of this. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Emma. Mwah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.